Knowing which grass you have on your lawn is important for knowing how to properly manage it. Different grasses require different amounts of fertilizer, have different water and light needs, and there are certainly differences in their tolerances to pesticides. Identifying grasses is often trickier than identifying broadleaf plants as grass leaves all generally look similar. We sometimes have to dig a little deeper with grasses to be able to identify them. Also, because we often mow grasses very short, using a hand lens or magnifying glass can be of great use in seeing different parts of the grass plant. Identification is often through the process of elimination as different species have different identification characteristics. We will discuss what to look for in this video and we'll talk about specific species in other videos. So for identification today I've got a Johnson grass plant which is a large plant to be able to show you the characteristics that we need to be able to see. And whenever I'm identifying grasses I always take out the easiest thing first and in this case and in any grass case it is the seed head if it's there. It's just one of those things that will help to give away what the plant is pretty quickly uh, if it's there. But uh, the problem in turf is we mow this often so a lot of times the seed head's just not there. When there's no seed head, we have to look at some other characteristics to be able to identify the plant. Uh, one of the things you may want to pick up is a hand lens. Uh, these things are very inexpensive. You can find them on the internet and they're going to help you identify some of these characteristics that are hard to see on some of the small plants. To use a hand lens, you bring the lens up to your eye and then bring the grass up to you to bring it into focus. When you're identifying grasses, you're going to want to go ahead and pull the entire plant up out of the ground so you've got all the characteristics to look at. So when I'm identifying grasses, the first thing that I'll look at is the, the vernation. And the vernation is going to be either rolled or folded. In this case, it is rolled. You can see this middle leaf here is wrapped around itself. If it was folded, it would look like a book just folded in half. Moving down the plant, the next thing that I'll look for is the ligule. So you want to fold a mature leaf back and right at the bend where the leaf attaches to the sheath, you'll see in this case a little membranous ligule. And that's what we're looking for there uh, is a ligule. Ligules can be membranous, hairy, or non-existent. Uh, but that's the next thing that I'll look for. On the back side of that same area, you've got the collar. And the collar is a lighter green color that can be continuous or divided, or that'll help to identify it as well. Uh, other things to look for on the leaves, uh, if there's anything interesting on a leaf, uh, like in this case, we've got a white stripe moving up the uh, middle of the leaf, it helps to identify that it's Johnson grass. Uh, but if there's other things, we can, we can talk about them as we get to the individual grasses. And then at the base of the plant, we've got, in this case, rhizomes that are underground, uh, underground runners that will pop up new plants next to the mother plant. Uh, if there were stolons, they would be uh, about the same area, but uh, running along on the surface of the ground. The growth habit of the plant is how it spreads and grows. Some grasses have a stoloniferous growth habit and spread via above ground lateral stems or runners. Some grasses have a rhizomatous growth habit and spread via below ground lateral stems. Some have both stolons and rhizomes, and others have a bunch type growth habit where the only spread that occurs is from new vertical stems called tillers. There are pros and cons to different growth habits depending on how the grass is being used. For instance, a grass that spreads from rhizomes or stolons is a nuisance when it spreads into landscape beds, but that same grass can be excellent on athletic fields as it will recover more quickly from damage. Looking back at the leaf, one final major identification characteristic to look at uh, is the oracles. Uh, in this case, we don't actually have them, but if we did, they would be a little nub uh, that sticks out at the end of the leaf and sometimes can be even clasping around the stem. And so the oracle at the same place that we'll find the collar and the ligule will look for an oracle. In grasses like quackgrass, that's a dead giveaway to what the plant is. As we go through this series, we'll talk a lot about some tips and tricks to help you identify different grasses. We'll also talk specifics for when there's two grasses that look very similar to each other, how you can tell those two grasses apart.